Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're joining me because we really have an amazing show in store for you today. Now, as you may know, this show is dedicated to motivating and inspiring you to live your best life. Often on the show, we talk to different people about their own journeys along the path to live the life of their dreams. And it's always my hope that through their stories, through what they've lived through, through what they've learned, that you will be inspired and motivated or touched by something or have an aha moment that can help you take your next step in your life or be motivated to take your next thing that is in front of you that you've been holding yourself back from or just ask that girl out even or whatever it may be for you, whatever it is that you want to do that you've not been able to do. This is the show that's going to motivate you to do that. So again, I'm so excited that you're watching. And my name is Mara Brown, and I'm the host for the show. I'm a best-selling author, life and executive coach, and motivational speaker. I have three books out. One is called Soaring to Success, How to Succeed in Any Economy. Another one's called The Interior Castle, Finding Spirituality in Your Everyday Life. And my latest book is called What Now? The Road from Success to Significance. So As I mentioned at the top of the show, I am super excited today because this is the end of a three-part series that we've been doing with one of my favorite people in the entire world. We've been talking to a businessman, a philanthropist, and an artist, and one of the kindest, most generous, most interesting, most amazing people in the entire world. So without further or further ado, let me introduce him to you again. Dick Marconi, welcome to the show. Again, thank you thank so you. much for being Your here. Your hands are cold. I know. It's a little cold in the studio. <laughs> um, so That's why again, I have my winter jacket. I know. <laughs> and I was just kind of, you know, dressed for summer. You know, little <laughs> so Show, Showing off. Showing off. Showing off these, you know, I've been working out. Yeah. <laughs> so we've talked in the first show a lot about the, the three-level philosophy that your father taught you about learning earning and returning. So we've talked the first show a lot about learning. The second show, we talked a lot about earning. And this show, I want to talk about returning. So we ended the last show with talking a bit about your cars. When you were in the in the stage of earning and you had made a lot of money through Herbalife and a number of other businesses, you found yourself in a lovely position where you could really enjoy your life. And you love cars. It's one of your passions. And so you bought a lot of cars. So tell me a bit about the number of cars that you bought, the depth and breadth of those cars, and then what you created with that passion that served other people. Well, that all ties into the learn, earn, and return. Yes. And uh, we discussed the learning and the earning. Mm -hmm. Um, And returning was um, a part that I've always done. Mm-hmm. When I was 13 years old, 13 or 14 after I lost my eye, and I was taking the bus or, yeah, the bus into Gary from Hobart, 12 mm-hmm. miles, and it, and my dad would give us 25 cents for mowing the lawn, okay? And if I did the neighbor's lawn, he would give us 25 or 35 cents, so... And I would take the bus in, which is a round trip ticket, was 12, 25 cents. And then I'd work out in the uh, YMCA at the time, boxing and stuff. And then mm-hmm. it's still really young. And then I'd stop off this incredible, it was a Jewish hot dog store. Okay. And I, after working out and, you know, go, getting ready to go home, before I caught the bus, I would grab that. You hot dog, I'd buy a hot dog, and man, I mean, I just it was my life. I loved, <laughs> you loved I that loved, hot dog. Oh, I loved it, and you know, and, and quite often I would see this when I'd come out, I'd see this young black guy, he would be sitting there and you know, tears eyes, and obviously dressed poorly. And and you know, I'd always break off half the hot dog mm-hmm. and give it to him, wow. you know, it's and, always and been he always character. thanked me, and that was so. To learn, earn, and return, that made as much impact on me yeah. as when I was able to give the Marconi Automotive Museum. And we had a lot of cars, that, and it was just the automotive museum where we kept our rate, we had our race shop there, and we kept a lot of our cars, Mustangs, and you know, all the other cars, but no Ferraris. And then we started collecting the Ferraris, 
as I told you the story of Johnny saying, Dad, you got to get rid of that jacket or get a Ferrari. And right. we got the 16, went up to 400000 from 16000 That's a good so, investment. Oh, a real good investment. Yeah. But I don't own it anymore. So, you know, I, um, I didn't want to see what I saw in a lot of uh, L.A. and Orange County where these rich men would have car collections and they were beautiful and they had these gorgeous museums. And they would and, sit there collecting dust. No, no, no. You would go in and see them and they were beautiful. Okay. But when they died, they got all sold off. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. It was gone. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to know how to do it. And then that's when How Bo to create said, a legacy. She's like, you know, I had all these cars in the, in the Marconi Automotive Museum, mm -hmm. but there wasn't a foundation for kids. And that's when Bo said, well, let's turn that into the uh, 501c3 foundation for kids. You donate that, A, you can take the tax write off, mm -hmm. but B, um, and that's not an incentive for me at the time to take a tax write off. Right. You wanted to give back. You wanted to do yeah, something. I wanted to return. And you wanted to create a legacy. So you wanted to And I wanted that. to be there whether I live or die. Yeah. No, I'm 82. I'm going to be 100. What eighteen years? You're gonna, you're, you're gonna be well over a hundred. Well, no, nah, my goal is a hundred. Uh, you know, and that's eighteen years from now, and I think I can make that. Mm -hmm. You know, I still work out five days a week, and oh, you're and, healthier and younger than most fifty year olds well, I know. And, and watch what I eat and stuff, mm -hmm. and that's what. It, but, but I wanted to give them. Uh, you know, both said, "Hey, let's make it a foundation for kids, a five hundred one c three." And I said, "Okay." So, let's how many it. cars do you have there? I, I don't know for sure, but there's, you know, because it's hard to count them each day when you go in and out and we're adding one or, you know, we just so we had two F-50s and they only made like 50 of them. That was Enzo Ferrari's last input into um, uh, the Ferraris. And uh, that was the F-50 and we had two of them. Okay, out of 50 in the world. Sold one. I don't know, we, in Europe, we got a couple million. And then... Uh, and then we got a, another race car, a Formula One car for it. But we have a lot of cars, probably close to 100. And those 100 cars, you know, we have, I mean, I could just tell you a few of them, like we have Mario Andretti's last winning car from Colorado, the Formula, wow. the um, Indy car. We have um, Kenny Bernstein's first 300 mile an hour dragster up on a huge <laughs> dragster up on the wall. Okay, we have the first Porsche Indy car. I just, I mean, so many, um, so many beautiful, 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 one of a kind cars and race cars, you know, that all have a story. I can go in there and take two or three days because each car has a story. They mm -hmm. say, Dick, what's your favorite car? And I said, do you have any kids? Mm -mm. Okay. You won't work. But most women or most men will say, yeah, I've got two or three. Which is your favorite? Well, the man can never say that if his wife's there. He can never <laughs> tell you what's her favorite one. Yeah. And uh, the women won't ever say, I like this one or this one or this one the best. And I said, these are my babies. Every one of these cars are like my babies. They, they have all, a story. They have a story. Yeah. I love that you've then created out of this beautiful arrangement of cars something that gives back to the community. So talk about... The, the charities that they support. Bo runs it. My wife got a beautiful team there. And uh, they run the, uh, the museum and they raise uh, um, plus or minus a million dollars net a year for kids at risk. And, you know, part of it's Covenant House. I see that you have like 40 charities that you support. Yeah. And then, and like Covenant House, I, you know, Bill Simon built a dormitory for the kids mm -hmm. and at the time. And I built them another dormitory for the kids at the that come to California to become stars and starlets and, you know, yeah. they end up on the streets on the street. and, you yeah. know, and stuff like that. And it just, you know, it breaks my heart. Yeah. So anything we can do to help. And, and Bo was uh, chairman of the board out here at, um, uh, of the Western Covenant at Covenant House. And you can take touch, you could take virtual tour. Mm, okay. The they've line. got it set up where you can tour and you can see all of the cars and it'll give you a little, uh, what they are, which ones they are, and stuff like that. And, and it's, it's pretty. Incredible. And you can you can drive it, follow your arrow. You can make the arrow go through the whole museum and into the ray shop. You say, oh, there's the that's the Baraxo car that was driven won the first Long Beach Grand Prix. And so, oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And and every car has that story, and that's mm -hmm. what what really rings your bell. And 
like we had Jay Leno there. Jay Leno has a great museum. Yeah. And he said he loves ours. You know, he just yeah. loves ours. And I'm sure then he was a great contributor to the cause because it's yeah. not just so much about the cars, but it's about helping the children. Helping. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about like you, you, you're starting a new chapter of your life that you've recently started. And I love that you always reinvent yourself. And this new chapter is incredible. And that's actually how I came to meet you was through your art. You have become basically a master at art. You, you're incredible having taken this up later in life and your artwork is gorgeous. So as we're speaking, now we're going to show some of your art pictures of artists sort of going to go through as we speak. You can see some of your beautiful, beautiful work and you have a very specific process. Tell me about your process with your art. Well, you know, it's been like, um, it's, it's been like, uh, my mother always said, being second is first in a long time, long line of losers. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a loser. No, I want to be a winner. I want to be the icon of the 21st century. Okay. Picasso's gone. Okay. Monet, all those guys. And, and you got, um, they're gone. I want to be an icon of the 21st century. And I've developed this new process. You know, when I used to walk down from Laguna beach and, uh, taking pictures and then on the way to Monterey, Carmel by the sea, you know, the mountains and all of that stuff. And everybody took the same picture and the color of the water is different. The waves are bigger or lesser and, you know, the sand is higher or blowing. And so, you know, I just didn't want to be that same guy that did the same painting. Mm -hmm. And I still have some and they're beautiful. I love them. Mm -hmm. uh, old barns. I did a lot of old barns. I go to a horse show with Bo and I'd go out and and you know, take photos that it would I could paint pictures of old barns there in Kentucky. How old were you when you started painting? Well, I was um, high school and in college, and uh, I was impacted by, as I think I told you one time, by this Henry Moore, the great artist, uh, the the um, sculptor from England, one of the greatest there was. Okay, mm -hmm. he came to Indiana University, and I was getting my master's or no, my undergraduate in uh, pre med, and so they said they want to take uh, sculpting, and I said okay, and so I was taking that, and Henry Moore came as guest lecturer for for two weeks or three wow. weeks, wow. and he walked into the room, and I walked into the room, mm -hmm. and I saw we saw each other, and we bonded. Mm -hmm. It's like no bonding I'd ever had with another man in the room and I was just in my probably twenties and um, working on artwork. And he said, Dick, he's blind in his left eye. I'm blind in my left eye. Wow. And that's why we bonded. Mm -hmm. And so he said, get rid of those teapots and little ashtrays that you're making and let's make a sculpt a head. And I said, okay. He says, what do you want to do? I said, well, I came from Gary and it's 60% black. Let's do a one-eyed black George because you don't have an eye. I don't have an eye. He says, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And we did them. Mm -hmm. And I still have my original plus wow. some bronze ones and some other ones that I made, but I still have the original. And I can remember this day. This motivated me to yeah. get into art more and more. And he said, uh, I like yours better than mine, Dick. Wow. And then he took it back. We we made of the of the the clay piece, we made a plaster mold and then we made a plaster casting of that piece. He took it back to England with him, made it out of marble. I had mine for years and years and years, had it made out of marble, black and white George. He sold his for three million dollars. Wow, and he liked yours better. Yeah. Wow. And I still have a couple of those wow. things. See? And you would see them at the art galleries and stuff. Yeah. Now, but your anyway. art is actually at one of the best art galleries in Orange County, uh, yeah. Ethos Contemporary Art. And they, is the greatest, specialize, yeah. they specialize in living masters. Yeah. And, and, they, and a they, great art gallery and owned by an amazing artist, Georgiana yeah. Ireland. So you are uh, very well represented there in that gallery. And that was sort of how we met. And so talk a bit about your process today, because your art is so unique and so really, um, it drew me right to you. Well, I was showing the old stuff, okay? The beautiful art I love. Mm -hmm. The barns, 
the sea, Laguna, from the montage or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. But everybody did that. And I said, that's not me. Right. I always wanted to be number one. Remember? Did, yeah. So I said, okay, I'm going to develop my own style of art that no one else can do, no one else is doing. And that's called color fusion. And I've trademarked the name and everything else. Mine is color fusion, and it's I, by using many different kinds of paints. Okay, aircraft paint, house paint, a lot of different paints, art paint, car paint, right? Car paint, and twelve, eleven or twelve different solvents, so I can make one paint move into the other and just blend with them because of the two or three solvents I'm using, or I can make one paint move and stop completely that you can't do with a brush can't do with a palette knife okay very 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 impossible so i can make these things move and that's what i've got into because after i got blinded in one eye and i lost the sight knee in my good eye for a week or two where all i could see then it came back black and white it's everything is color now yeah and my whole life is about color yeah, when you see the paintings, you lost it. Yeah. when you see the paintings, it just jumps out. Yeah. Well, and we've it, got a picture's worth a thousand words, so we've got a video okay. of uh, showing you in the process of creating your art. So let's roll that now. Color has always been so important in my life. You know, when I was just a kid, I got blinded in a dumb accident when I was like 12, 13 years old. I was blind in both eyes, lost the sight completely in my left eye. But as I began to regain some of my vision in my right eye, it went to black and then to gray and then pretty soon color. And from then on, my whole life has been about color. I love color. Color fusion is being able to take colors and make them move and flow in a manner that no one else is doing. You use many different kinds of paint. You use aircraft paint, car paint, house paint, and you use a half a dozen different solvents. You get one solvent, it makes one kind of paint flow fast. Another one will make it flow slow. You're constantly playing with that, and I've evolved where I can make these colors move and even make two colors or three colors or four colors into one color. It's something like 12 hours before movement stops completely. And sometimes you're the captain, you're the artist, you're the boss. And then sometimes you wake up in the morning and you look at your painting and you say, oh man, did I screw that one up? You know, conversely, it could be, wow, that really came out great. I've always been fascinated by art. We had very little money growing up. My dad made $7.50 a week in the U.S. steel mills during, right after the Depression. So we didn't have a lot of money and we didn't have any cars. We took the bus everywhere. And my mother would take us to the art museums. And, and so I was really fascinated by that. And then when I went away to college, I was in pre-med. I was gonna be a doctor at that time. And uh, they said, hey, take a course in ceramics so that you get manual dexterity and it'll help you. And I did. Then I got a chance to meet Henry Moore, the great English sculptor. He came for a three-week session teaching at Indiana University there. And we bonded. He said, quit making those little pots and ashtrays and things like that. He said, let's, let's get into some sculpting of a human. First of all, we made it out of clay. And when it was done, mine and his, he said, Stick, I like yours better than mine. And that was a motivation for me that probably kept me focused in my life on art. No great artist, whether it was Picasso, Monet, Van Gogh, they didn't finish painting the way they started painting. It evolved, and I think that's what's happened in my life. It started in the 60s, I was painting the Van Gogh style cornfields and wheat fields and the scarecrow and the crows, heavy palette knife, until I got into just impressionist painting and I used brushes and palette knives. 
I've had a chance to meet a lot of great artists and they impacted my life as an artist. Paul Moss had a little, I want to say, ranch in Midhurst in England. My brother lived right next door to him. And so I got a chance to meet him and he showed me how to do what he was doing. And I just fell in love with it. And when he passed on, I was able to, from his uh, wife, uh, buy a lot of the paintings and, and have them to this day. Sergei Bongard, the Russian, who was in England and even came to the United States for part-time. Salvador Dali, Picasso I have, and, and a lot of other paintings that, that I've acquired over the years, but they've been an uh, influence for me. Until I retired, you know, I was so involved in business and, uh, and uh, philanthropy and the Marconi Automotive Museum and Foundation for Kids that I just didn't have time to paint. Now I have the time to do what I want to do, and that's painting. And um, color fusion is my, my passion, my goal in life. I want to be uh, one of the icons of the 21st century because I have something that no one else is doing, and I want to just get out there. I want to share these paintings with the world. These are all my children, and I love them. Every one of them has a different feel that means something to me. After the big earthquake and tsunami in Japan, I mean, it was a tremendously emotional thing to see on television. That triggered something inside of me. And then, you know, when I went to paint the next morning, I did aftershock. If you look at the painting, it could be anything you saw, not necessarily the tsunami. This has energy. It can be anger or beauty or calm or anything, whatever you see in it. And each time you look at it, it's, you see something different. I've always been so wired. I uh, would go 24 seven, uh, work, 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 work. And, and the paintings of this, they reflect that same feel in me. I was blessed in having an Italian father and a Russian mother, okay? The father taught us honest day's labor for an honest day's pay, or learn, earn, and return, which has been my mantra, okay? Now my Russian mother said, on the other hand, boys, being second in anything is the first in a long line of losers. When I lost my eye, it was a challenge, not a handicap. I went on to play college football. I was captain of the high school football team won the Golden Gloves in the state of Illinois. I drove race cars in the Long Beach Grand Prix in 1994 at 57 years old. I've always been goal oriented. I would shoot for the stars. And if you didn't hit it, I didn't care because I'd land on the moon, all right? I didn't feel like a failure because I didn't hit the stars. I landed on the moon. And so that's my life. Amazing, amazing. And, and you look really good in that video too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> old man, I look like old man and they're painting with dirty, with paint all over my clothes <laughs> and my hands and gloves and stuff. But the art but, is truly but, extraordinary. But you can, gorgeous. you can, that's why I was doing this through, the, through half of the, the presentations. Mm -hmm. It's because of my fingertips. Like I have no, almost no um, fingerprints because of wow. the solvents that I'm using. Oh, wow. Wow and the paints and stuff like that in my hands and I'm painting with my hands. And but how great that, I mean, that's gotta be yeah. such a sense of satisfaction uh, working with your hands and creating beauty. And then, I mean, and it really is beautiful and, and it brings out emotions in people. Like it's art, I've heard a great definition of art that art is supposed to make you feel something. It's just about what you feel when you look at or experience that art. And you know, one thing about color fusion that I'm doing, I, I Everyone sees something different in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I paint it's almost the, like those I, I, ink blot tests, like they used to yeah. use. Well, I paint the thing, and then it, it's there. And I come out next the next day. I may have eight or ten paintings down there drying, and I have to name them. 
Mm. Toughest thing. Yeah. It's not on the way to Monterey, Carmel by the Sea, Laguna from the Montage. This is all, how do you name them? Yeah, how do you name them? That's the hardest, hardest part because everyone sees something different in it. Yeah. And I'll come up with a name like, you know, uh, Color Majesty or, well, uh, whatever the name. But um, it's, it's up there and it's the uh, life beneath the waves. It's, it's 24 high and 36 wide. And it's in this art gallery down in Laguna was there. And this woman is looking at it and I'm telling another uh, interested party about the, you know, what, it, and it's Laguna or it's uh, life beneath the sea. And this old woman is sitting back here and she's looking up and she said, life beneath the sea, what are you, why would you have that, that um, oxen in the upper right hand corner? If it's and you're like, what oxen? I know, it's exactly. great, but that's the thing. Art is what you see, and you're going to have yeah. your art in, in an Italian-American museum. You're going to be having your art. You're going to be doing a show upcoming in May at yes. the V Wine House here in West right Hollywood. Here. So everyone watching, be sure to come out and, and see uh, Dick's art. Yeah. And so we're winding down now, and we're closing our three-part series. And so you've lived a long time, 82 years. You've learned, you have earned, and you have returned. Well, and I, mean, I know I'm you're returning. in the process of it. When Anything... I can give great art that turns people on, okay, when I can give that to them, when I can make that available to them, then I'm giving back too. Yeah, well, I think you're definitely doing that. So any last words, and like what, anything you want to leave with that we haven't talked about, anything you want to say? I, the most important thing is, Thank you. Thank you so much for this three-part series. Thank you for coming up and thank you for sitting with us and sharing yourself, your wisdom, and just you and everything you are with us. And there was so much that we've learned from you in this three-part series. And we're all better for having known you. And thank you for all that you are and all that you do. Whatever I can do to help you achieve your goal now. Thank you. I'll be pleased, pleased to do it. Thank you. I'll bring some paintings for auction. Sounds good. All and right. it all goes to your charities. Sounds good. Okay. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.